The year was 2447, and humanity's reach across the cosmos was no longer confined to the cradle of Earth. Colonies spread from the arid stretches of Mars to the icy belts of Kuiper, but beyond these safe harbors lay the nebulous frontier of the Orion Nebula, a vast expanse where lawlessness thrived under the guise of unclaimed territories. Captain Ilara Miles, commander of the starship Nemesis, was well acquainted with the Dark Void. Her ship, a sleek battlecruiser retrofitted for deep space reconnaissance, glided through the cosmos, its sensors perpetually scanning for anomalies. The Nemesis was not just a vessel. It was a sentinel in the vast, uncharted spaces between star systems. An unexpected signal. It was during a routine sweep near the outer bands of the Orion Nebula that the Nemesis picked up an anomalous signal. The frequency was unlike any typically used by the Galactic Council's member species. Curiosity peaked. Captain Miles rerouted the ship's course to trace the source. What they discovered was a planet, marked as uninhabited and uncharted on all official maps, a ghost in the galactic records. Landing and Discovery The planet was shrouded in dense mists and perpetual twilight, created by its sun's weak light struggling through two competing atmospheres. Captain Miles decided on a cautious landing in a clearing that appeared man-made a sign of possible habitation, or worse, concealment. As Alara and her team disembarked, they were met with a sight that chilled even the most seasoned among them. Hidden by the planet's eerie mists was a facility, its architecture distinctly non-human, cold and metallic, with the sterile aura of a laboratory rather than a settlement. The facility's secrets inside, the facility was abandoned, or so it seemed. Dust layers suggested it hadn't been used in months, but the power was still on, a whisper of life in the otherwise tomb-like silence. As they ventured deeper, guided by the dim clinical light, they stumbled upon a series of containment units. Most were empty, but one held a shocking sight, a human child, barely conscious, with pale skin marred by scars and recent injuries. Captain Miles approached the containment unit slowly, her heart pounding with a mix of anger and sorrow. The boy inside looked up, his eyes wide with a blend of fear and relief. Please, he whispered, his voice hoarse and weak. Help me. The Boy's Tale After carefully extracting him from the unit, Ilara's medic quickly tended to his injuries as he told his story. His name was Seven, a designation given by his captors rather than a real name. He spoke of his abduction from a frontier colony, his family killed in a raid. The captors, he revealed, were Atraxians, known for their scientific prowess and part of the Galactic Council. Their experiments were cruel, designed to test human limits for unknown but clearly nefarious purposes. The Revelation Captain Miles recorded Seven's account, capturing every detail with grim resolution. The implications were severe. Not only was there illegal activity in Council-regulated space, but it involved a member species experimenting on humans, a clear violation of several interstellar accords. As they left the planet, the facility behind them, a silent tomb once more, Ilara knew this was only the beginning. The evidence gathered needed to be brought before the Galactic Council. Humanity's place within this cosmic parliament was tenuous and this revelation could spark a conflict that might engulf countless worlds. But first, they had to survive the journey back, with the potential pursuit of Atraxian forces who would go to great lengths to bury their secrets. The nemesis set course for Earth, the weight of their discovery bearing down on them all. Captain Miles felt the cold specter of the coming days. War, she knew, might be inevitable. But for the sake of Seven and whatever peace they could salvage, it was a war she was prepared to wage. As the starship Nemesis made its swift journey back to Earth, the evidence of the Atraxian atrocities was securely encrypted within its data vaults. Captain Alara Miles spent the transit preparing her report for the Galactic Human Alliance, GHA, the governing body of humanity's interstellar territories. Her mind, however, was restless with the image of Seven, the child who had endured unimaginable horrors at the hands of an alien species that humanity had trusted as council allies. The leak before the nemesis even touched down, 
snippets of the damning evidence had leaked to the human media. The story of Seven, complete with harrowing visuals of his captivity and scars, spread across the galaxy at light speed. The news outlets, always ravenous for a scandal, especially one involving the secretive Atraxians, broadcasted round-the-clock coverage that sparked public fury and horror. Human territories in uproar. The public's reaction was explosive. Protests erupted in major cities on every human-occupied planet. The images of the frail, scarred boy juxtaposed against the cold, clinical backdrop of his prison struck a chord deep within the human psyche. Crowds gathered, chanting and waving banners that demanded justice for seven, and called for retribution against the Atraxian deceivers. On Mars, demonstrators surrounded the Atraxian embassy, their angry shouts filling the air as they clashed with riot police. The embassy, a sleek structure of glass and steel that now stood besieged, became a symbol of Atraxian malfeasance. The GHA's response. Under immense public pressure, the leaders of the GHA convened an emergency session to address the crisis. Captain Miles was summoned to present her findings directly to the assembly. With the galaxy watching, she stood before the planetary representatives, her voice steady but filled with cold fury as she recounted the horrors discovered on the hidden planet. The assembly was divided. Some members called for immediate sanctions against the Atraxians and their expulsion from the Galactic Council. Others urged caution, fearing the repercussions of such an aggressive stance against a powerful member of the Council. A call to arms. As the politicians debated, the public's demand for action grew louder. Military veterans and active duty troops alike voiced their willingness to take up arms against the Atraxians. The GHA's military advisors, already concerned about the Atraxian military capabilities, began to prepare contingency plans for a potential conflict. Captain Miles's plea. In a powerful closing statement, Captain Miles appealed not only to the Assembly's sense of justice, but also to their duty to protect humanity. We stand at a crossroads, she declared. The path we choose today will define humanity's role in this galaxy. Will we bow to those who torture our children? Or will we stand and say, no more? The Galactic Council's Indifference The session concluded with the GHA sending a formal complaint to the Galactic Council, demanding an immediate investigation into the Atraxians' conduct and calling for sanctions. However, the Council, dominated by Atraxian allies and bureaucratic red tape, dismissed the allegations as unsubstantiated and provocative. This dismissal served only to fuel the flames of human anger. Across human territories, calls for withdrawal from the Council and for direct action against the Atraxians intensified. Captain Miles, once a mere military officer, emerged as the face of a growing movement determined to seek justice for Seven and ensure such atrocities never occurred again. The stage was set for a confrontation of galactic proportions. Humanity's outcry would not be silenced. The worlds would hear their roar. The cry for vengeance resonated through space, for seven, for justice, and for the defense of all human life against the tyranny of the stars. In the wake of the Galactic Council's dismissal, the human territories were abuzz with a single, unified purpose. Calls for justice transformed into cries for vengeance as the GHA grappled with the Atraxians' blatant disregard for life and law. With diplomatic avenues exhausted and public unrest growing, a covert faction within the GHA's military, codenamed the Retaliators, was greenlit to execute a series of precision strikes against key Atraxian interests. Formation of the Retaliators, Captain Ilara Miles, was chosen to lead the Retaliators due to her combat prowess, tactical acumen, and personal stake in the matter following her rescue of Seven. Under her command, the Retaliators were a melange of elite soldiers, skilled hackers, and intelligence operatives drawn from across human-occupied space. Each member was driven by a shared desire for retribution, making them a formidable force against the Atraxians. The first strike. Their first target was a remote Atraxian communication hub located on the edge of the Draco Nebula. Disguised as a meteorological station, this hub coordinated Atraxian military movements within the nebula. Infiltrating the station posed significant risks. 
It was surrounded by asteroid fields and heavily armed. Using cloaked shuttles, the retaliators navigated the hazardous asteroid belts to reach the station. The operation had to be swift, neutralize the guards, plant the explosives, and extract before any distress signals could be sent. The mission was a resounding success. As they retreated, the communication hub was reduced to space debris, crippling Atraxian operations in the nebula and sending a clear message. Humanity was fighting back. The cyber onslaught. With physical assaults underway, the retaliators' cyber ops team, led by a prodigious hacker named Tali Corzin, launched their own form of warfare. Tali and her team infiltrated the Atraxian data networks, siphoning off intelligence and planting disruptive viruses. One of their viruses, codenamed Erebus, caused chaos within the Atraxian fleet command systems, leading to false fleet movements and impaired communication. The rescue mission's intelligence gathered from the cyber ops revealed locations where other human captives were held. The retaliators shifted focus, initiating a series of daring rescues. On the barren moon of Xylon, they liberated over 30 humans from an underground experimental facility. Each rescue eroded the Atraxian's image of invulnerability, boosting morale across human worlds and galvanizing more support for the retaliators' cause. Growing public support. As news of their successes spread, public perception of the retaliators shifted from fringe vigilantes to celebrated heroes. The media, once critical, now portrayed them as gallant freedom fighters, battling against a cruel and oppressive foe. This swell of public support provided the GHA with the political cover needed to expand the retaliators' operations. Escalation Each successful operation by the retaliators drew harsher reprisals from the Atraxians, who increased their military patrols and cracked down on human sectors. However, these actions only deepened the resolve of the human colonies, who saw the Atraxian responses as confirmation of their fears and justification for their continued resistance. The cycle of attack and counterattack escalated, pushing the galaxy closer to a full-blown war. Captain Miles, however, remained focused. Each mission brought them closer to her ultimate goal, the Atraxian core worlds. She knew that to truly shift the balance of power, they needed a decisive victory. The retaliators were not just defenders or avengers anymore. They were the spearhead of humanity's wrath, and their next target would be the heart of Atraxian operations, the research facility on Pythar that held many more like Seven in its dark embrace. The retaliators prepared for their most audacious operation yet. The stakes were higher than ever, but so too was their resolve. The galaxy watched and waited, as on the horizon, Pythar's doom approached, heralded by the fires of human determination and the echoes of a child's suffering. The war had begun, and there would be no turning back. Captain Ilara Miles and her team of retaliators were poised for what could be the turning point in their covert war against the Atraxians. The target was Pythar, a heavily fortified planet that served as the heart of the Atraxian research network and the site of unspeakable horrors against human captives. Success would cripple the Atraxian war effort and avenge the atrocities committed against Seven and many others. Preparations for the Assault The Nemesis orbited a barren moon, serving as the staging ground for the assault on Pythar. The crew worked tirelessly to load assault crafts with explosives, hack modules, and weapons. Every member of the retaliators knew the gravity of the mission. They were not just fighting for revenge, but also for the future of humanity. Captain Miles briefed her team extensively. The plan was intricate, requiring precise execution. They would use modified cloaking technology to evade Pythar's extensive sensor networks and breach the planet's defenses. Timing was critical. Even the slightest error could lead to a catastrophic failure. Infiltration As the retaliators' fleet approached Pythar, the tension was palpable. The cloaking devices, scavenged from Atraxian outposts and modified by Tali Corson, flickered silently into operation, rendering the fleet invisible to radar and visual detection. They penetrated the outer defense ring with alarming ease, a testament to Tali's genius and the Atraxians' overconfidence in their technological supremacy. 
the retaliators landed undetected, disembarking into the hostile terrain of Pythar, a world of dark skies and darker secrets. Sabotage The team split into groups, each tasked with a specific objective. One unit, led by Lieutenant Harrow, targeted the energy cores that powered the facility's shields and containment fields. Another, under Commander Voss, planted explosives along the facility's structural weak points. Captain Miles and a select team including Seven, now a symbol of their cause, infiltrated the main laboratory complex. Their goal was to free any remaining human captives and retrieve critical data that could expose further Atraxian plans. The escape. As the explosives were set and the last of the captives freed, the retaliators began their harrowing escape. Alarms blared, and Atraxian security forces swarmed the facility. Blaster fire lit the corridors as Miles' team fought their way back to their extraction points. Above them, the skies of Pythar were illuminated by the first signs of dawn, or so it seemed. In truth, it was the glow of the retaliators' ships, breaking cloak as they commenced a full aerial assault to cover the escape of their comrades on the ground. Pythar Burns With all teams accounted for and the captives in tow, Captain Miles gave the signal. The explosives detonated in a series of blinding flashes, the shockwaves felt even as they ascended into orbit. The facility that had been a house of horrors for so many disintegrated into rubble, a fitting end to a bastion of cruelty. As they watched from the nemesis, the planet's atmosphere ignited from the chemical instabilities the explosions triggered. What was once a symbol of fear and subjugation now burned as a beacon of wrath and retribution. Pythar's burning skies were a declaration to the galaxy. Humanity would no longer tolerate such atrocities. Aftermath The destruction of Pythar was a major blow to the Atraxians, both materially and psychologically. Their network of terror had been dismantled, their invincibility shattered. Across human territories, the news of Pythar's fall was met with jubilation and renewed hope. For Captain Miles, the victory was bittersweet. The horrors they had witnessed, the lives lost and broken, could never be forgotten. But this triumph was a decisive step towards ending the Atraxian threat and ensuring such atrocities would never occur again. As the retaliators set course back to human space, they left behind a world in flames, a harsh but necessary act of vengeance for peace to eventually flourish. The galaxy had been altered irrevocably, and while the war was far from over, the message was clear. Humanity was a force to be reckoned with, and their resolve was forged in the fires of retribution. The smoldering ruins of Pythar served as a stark testament to humanity's resolve. With the Atraxian research facility reduced to ashes, the atrocities committed against human captives had finally been avenged. Yet Captain Ilara Miles knew that the destruction of Pythar was only the beginning. The Galactic Council's reluctance to address the Atraxian crimes had pushed humanity to take matters into their own hands. And now, the repercussions of this defiance would unfold across the galaxy. Fallout and Fury the news of Pythar's fall sent shockwaves through the Galactic Council. The Atraxians, humiliated and enraged by the assault, demanded immediate military retaliation against the human territories. They portrayed the attack as an unprovoked act of barbarism, glossing over the context of their own brutal experiments. However, the leak of the horrifying experiments conducted on Pythar, including detailed logs and video evidence smuggled out by the retaliators, began to circulate widely. As these revelations spread, sympathy for the Atraxians waned, and public opinion across numerous worlds began to shift. The images of human suffering and the devastating testimonials of survivors like Seven painted a damning picture that could not be ignored. The Tribunal Under immense pressure from various member species and facing growing dissent within its own ranks, the Galactic Council was forced to convene a tribunal to investigate the allegations against the Atraxians. Captain Miles was summoned once again, this time to testify before the galaxy about the horrors she and her team had uncovered. In a packed council chamber with representatives from hundreds of planets looking on, Ilara presented the evidence her team had collected. 
She spoke not only of the physical scars borne by the captives, but also of the psychological and emotional trauma inflicted upon them. Her testimony, while clinical in detail, was delivered with palpable emotion, emphasizing the systemic nature of the Atraxian violations. The Defense Crumbles The Atraxians, caught off guard by the meticulousness of the evidence, struggled to mount a defense. Their arguments, rife with denials and obfuscation, faltered under the weight of the proof presented. When survivors like Seven took the stand, sharing their first-hand accounts of the experiments, the chamber was left in stunned silence, the gravity of their testimonies undeniable. Verdict and Vindication After days of deliberations, the tribunal found the Atraxians guilty of multiple violations of the Sentient Rights Charter, including unlawful experimentation, torture, and crimes against peace. The verdict was a landmark in Galactic Council history, showcasing that even powerful member species could not act with impunity. The Council ordered the Atraxians to pay reparations to the survivors and imposed strict sanctions on their scientific and military endeavors. Furthermore, the Atraxians were put on probation within the Council, their rights as members severely curtailed. Humanity's New Role the Tribunal's decision marked a new era for humanity's role in galactic affairs. Sympathy and respect for humans increased, bolstering their position within the Council. The GHA, and particularly the Retaliators, were recognized not as rogue elements, but as legitimate enforcers of galactic law and justice. Captain Miles, once a simple starship captain, had become a galactic icon of resilience and justice. Her leadership and the courage of her team had not only avenged the victims of the Atraxians, but it also reshaped the political landscape of the galaxy. Moving Forward As the Nemesis returned to Earth, the celebrations were tempered by the knowledge of the long recovery ahead for those rescued from Pythar. Rehabilitation centers were established on various human worlds, dedicated to healing the physical and psychological wounds inflicted by the Atraxians. Captain Miles, while hailed as a hero, quietly prepared for the challenges ahead. The galaxy was watching, and the future held new responsibilities for her and humanity. The burning of Pythar was not just retribution. It was a declaration that humanity would stand vigilant and ready to defend the rights of all sentient beings against tyranny. Thus, as the Galactic Council embarked on a path of reform, the fires of Pythar, though extinguished, continued to burn as a beacon of hope and a warning. Justice, though sometimes delayed, would not be denied. The cosmos had changed forever, and humanity was at the heart of this new dawn. In the aftermath of the Galactic Tribunal's landmark decision, the once mighty Atraxian Empire faced unprecedented isolation as sanctions bit deep into their economy and scientific community. The ruins of Pythar, still glowing faintly with the embers of destruction, became a symbol across the galaxy, not just of human vengeance, but of a new order underpinned by justice and the rule of law. Rebuilding and Reconciliation With the Atraxians chastened and their capabilities diminished, the Galactic Human Alliance, GHA, spearheaded efforts to rebuild the worlds that had been scarred by conflict and neglect. Captain Alara Miles, though offered numerous high-ranking positions within the GHA, chose to remain in the field, overseeing the rehabilitation of former Atraxian facilities into centers of learning and diplomacy. On Pythar, the largest of these projects was undertaken. The planet was transformed from a symbol of terror into a beacon of peace. Where once stood the laboratories where inhumane experiments were conducted, now rose the Pithar Peace University, dedicated to the study of interspecies relations and the prevention of atrocities. The healing of 7-7, the boy whose plight had sparked the galactic upheaval, became the face of the new Pythar. Under the care of Captain Miles and a team of psychological and medical specialists, he gradually recovered from his physical wounds and began to assist other survivors of Atraxian cruelty. His resilience and ability to forgive, even those who had wronged him, made him a powerful ambassador for the university's mission. Galactic Shifts 
The fall of Pithar had broader implications for galactic politics. The weakened Atraxians, now pariahs within the council they had once manipulated, turned inward, their government rocked by internal strife and power struggles. In contrast, the GHA, emboldened by its moral and military victories, assumed a greater role in the Galactic Council, advocating for reforms that would prevent the rise of another tyrannical regime. Human territories flourished as trade routes previously monopolized by the Atraxians opened up, and human diplomatic and cultural influence spread. Humanity's former image as a young and peripheral member of the galaxy was replaced by that of a key player in the galactic community, a defender of rights and a promoter of unity. The Legacy of the Retaliators The Retaliators, once a covert ops team, were officially recognized as a peacekeeping and intervention force under the GHA's banner. Their mandate expanded to include the prevention of atrocities in non-human conflicts, turning their expertise in warfare into a force for peace. Captain Miles, while overseeing the Retaliator's transformation, also became a key figure in diplomatic circles, using her status to influence policy and ensure that the lessons of Pythar were not forgotten. Her memoirs, detailing the dark days of her fight against the Atraxians and the path to redemption that followed, became required reading in military and diplomatic academies across the galaxy. A Lasting Peace As the galaxy moved forward, the ashes of Pythar served as a constant reminder of the cost of peace. The site of the former facility was preserved as a memorial, its charred earth covered with plaques bearing the names of every known victim of the Atraxian experiments. It stood as a somber testament to the horrors that had occurred and a vow from the galactic community, never again. The annual remembrance ceremonies held at the site were attended by thousands, including many who had no direct connection to the events on Pythar, but who came to pay their respects and commit to the cause of peace. These ceremonies, often featuring speeches by Captain Miles and Seven, linked arms with survivors, emphasizing the enduring importance of vigilance, unity, and compassion in the face of darkness. Conclusion From the ashes of Pythar rose not just new structures, but new ideas. The galaxy had been irrevocably changed by the events that unfolded in the wake of Seven's rescue. Humanity's role within the Galactic Council had evolved from that of a bystander to that of a custodian, a protector of the fragile peace that now held sway. Captain Miles, looking out over the crowds at a remembrance ceremony, felt a mixture of sorrow and pride. Sorrow for those lost, and for the innocents forever marred by the Atraxian's cruelty, and pride for the peace forged from the flames of retribution. The galaxy would remember Pythar not just for the fire that raised it, but for the phoenix that rose from its ashes, a new era of interstellar justice and cooperation. Years had passed since the fall of Pythar, and the galaxy had settled into a new rhythm, with the Galactic Human Alliance, GHA, playing a pivotal role in guiding the interstellar community towards cooperation and peace. The ashes of conflict had given rise to robust institutions and a renewed commitment to uphold the sanctity of sentient rights. The Galactic Council reformed the Galactic Council, once a stagnant body mired by corruption and inefficiencies, had undergone significant reforms. With humanity's increased influence, new policies and oversight mechanisms were implemented to ensure transparency and fairness in Council decisions. The Atraxians, their power curtailed and ambitions checked, had slowly rehabilitated their image, contributing to galactic projects and complying with the Council's strict new regulations. Captain Alara Miles, now Admiral Miles, had taken a less active role in day-to-day -day operations, but remained a key advisor to the GHA and the Council. Her experience and moral compass were invaluable in navigating the complex politics of the galaxy. Seven's Legacy Seven, the boy who had become a symbol of hope and resilience, was now a young man. His journey from a victim of unspeakable horrors to a beacon of strength and forgiveness was celebrated throughout the galaxy. As an ambassador of peace, Seven traveled to various worlds, sharing his story and the importance of compassion and vigilance in maintaining peace. His work, particularly with young survivors of conflict and oppression, 
was instrumental in healing the scars left by the Atraxians and other malevolent forces within the galaxy. Through his foundation, the Seven Lights Initiative, he established support networks and rehabilitation programs, turning his traumatic past into a catalyst for change. Humanity's expanded horizons. With the barriers once imposed by the Atraxians removed, humanity's exploration and settlement efforts reached new heights. New worlds were colonized and old ones were revitalized. Human culture and technology flourished, as did their economy, propelled by trade and innovation. The arts and sciences thrived, with human institutions at the forefront of galactic advancements in medicine, engineering, and quantum computing. Humanity's fleet, once a defensive force, was now part of the Galactic Peace Corps, serving as peacekeepers and aid providers across troubled regions of the galaxy. The Retaliators, rebranded as the Peace Wardens, were crucial in these efforts, embodying the ideals of justice and protection. Reflections Admiral Miles, sitting in her office on Earth, looked out over the cityscape with a contemplative gaze. The world had changed so much from those dark days aboard the Nemesis. She often thought about the crew that had stood by her side, about the fires of Pythar, and about the lives they had all touched. Her memoirs, From the Ashes, A Galaxy Reborn, had inspired a generation. Yet she knew that peace was a delicate thing, easily fractured by fear and misunderstanding. Her legacy, and that of all those who had fought with her, was a testament to the power of resilience and the enduring quest for justice. A Galactic Celebration The annual Day of Remembrance was approaching, a galaxy-wide event commemorating the fall of Pythar and celebrating the enduring peace. This year was special. It marked the 25th anniversary, and leaders from across the galaxy would gather to honor the past and forge the future. Seven was the keynote speaker. Standing at the podium, overlooking a sea of diverse beings, he spoke not just of the past, but of the future. We gather not to reopen old wounds, but to remember the strength it took to heal them. Let our memories of the past empower us to face the future with courage and hope. Let us walk together as one galaxy united in our diversity, bound by our shared humanity. A Unified Galaxy As the ceremony concluded, the attendees from hundreds of worlds, different species united by a common history, looked up at the stars. The galaxy was vast, filled with mysteries and opportunities, challenges and dreams. The legacy of the Retaliators, of Seven, of Admiral Miles, and of all those who had dared to stand against darkness, was a galaxy that looked forward with optimism, a galaxy that had learned its lessons well, and a galaxy that, despite its vastness, had never been more united. From the ashes of Pythar, a new era had dawned, one of peace, exploration, and shared prosperity. The New Horizons era 